Get ready to unleash your creativity and bring your embroidery skills to the next level. Welcome to Sweepy Machine Embroidery, where I, James, am excited to take you on a journey of crafting and designing with our latest sew along. We're diving into the Wild Rose Hanger, a stunning table runner that will add a touch of elegance and beauty to any room. This amazing project features intricate rose appliques that will amaze your friends and family. The hanger consists of three rose themed blocks and three beautiful border blocks that can be made in the 4x4, 5x5, 6x6 or the 7x7 size hooping. With this tutorial, we'll not only show you the stitch out of rose block 2 and border block 3, but also demonstrate how to create the runner, add backing and binding and finish it to perfection. We recommend you follow our photograph written instructions along with this video tutorial for the best results. To add more excitement and fun, join our March Soul Along Facebook group. We can participate in the monthly competition and also receive a 30% discount code to use on your checkout. And remember to please post your photos of your completed hangers. We would really love to see them all. And who knows, you might be the winner of the monthly competition and win some cool prizes. The link for that Facebook group will be in the description of this video. This tutorial is perfect for embroidery enthusiasts of all levels, whether you're a beginner or advanced crafter. So what are you waiting for? Grab your machine and supplies and let's get started on this wild rose hanger project together. If you found this video tutorial helpful in any way, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Good luck, have fun and let's create something beautiful. First, I'll show you how to make rose two block. Hoop up cutaway stabilizer in the hoop and load the design onto your machine using applique scissors for trimming the batting and fabric. Now place batting one on top of the hoop and stitch the batting down. Remove the hoop from your machine and trim the batting about 1 to 2 millimeters from the stitching. Now stitch the placement line for the first background. and place fabric A on top of the placement line and stitch down. Now remove the hoop from your machine and trim the fabric about one to two millimeters from the stitching, leaving the excess fabric in the seams. Using the bottom stitching line on fabric A as a placement line, place fabric B on top of the hoop wrong side up with a quarter inch crossing over the placement line and the excess pointing towards the top of the hoop and stitch down. Now fold over, hold taut and stitch down. Remove the hoop from your machine and trim the fabric about a quarter inch from the stitching. Now repeat the same process with the next strip using fabric C. And again using fabric D. Now repeat the same process with the next strip using fabric E, but do not trim the fabric this time. Then embroider the quilting on the background. Then stitch the placement line for the first petal. Place fabric F on top of the hoop right side up covering the placement line and stitch down. Then remove the hoop from your machine and trim the fabric about 1 to 2 millimeters from the stitching. After that, embroider the detail and then the satin stitch along the petal.
We will now repeat the applique process with the next pedal using Fabric G. Repeat the same applique process with Fabric H. Then repeat the applique process with the center of the flower using a piece of fabric large enough to cover the place and line and trim. Embroider the two satin stitches along the flower center. Embroider the stamens of the flower. And brought to the flower center. Repeat the applique process with the next petal using fabric I. Repeat the applique process with the last petal using Fabric J, repeating the embroidery and satin stitch process. You have now finished the stitch out of Rose 2 block. Remove your work from the hoop and trim the seams about half an inch using your rotary cutter and ruler. Then hold the side until all your blocks are made. Next we will stitch our border block 3. First, hoop up cutaway stabilizer in the hoop and load the design onto your machine. Then stitch the place and line for the batting. Place batting 2 on top of the hoop and then stitch the batting down. Remove the hoop from your machine and trim the batting about 1 to 2 millimeters from the stitching. Then stitch the place and line for the background and place fabric A on top of the placement line and stitch down. Remove the hoop from your machine and trim the fabric about 1 to 2 millimeters from the stitching. Using the right stitching line on fabric A as a placing line, place fabric B on top of the hoop wrong side up with a quarter inch crossing over the placing line and the excess pointing towards the left side of the hoop, then stitch down. Fold over, hold taut and stitch down. Remove the hoop from your machine and trim the fabric about 1 to 2 millimeters from the top and bottom stitching only. Leave the excess fabric in the seams. Now repeat the same process with the opposite border using another piece of fabric B. Using the top stitching line on fabric A as a placing line. Place fabric C on top of the hoop wrong side up with a quarter inch crossing over the placing line and the excess pointing towards the bottom side of the hoop and stitch down. Fold over, hold taut and stitch down. Then repeat the same process the bottom border using another piece of fabric C.
Then we're going to embroider the stems. Then embroider the two sets, parts of the leaves. and brought the veins of the leaves. And brought the four petals of the rosebud. And brought the base of the rosebud. And brought the furry bits of the rose hips. And brought the rose hips, shadows, the light side, and then the shine. You have now finished the stitch out of border block 3. Remove your work from the hoop, then trim your seams to about half an inch using your rotary cutter and ruler. Hold aside until you have completed all the remaining blocks. I will now walk you through the process of creating the hanger using the blocks you have just stitched out. The first step is to lay out your blocks on a flat surface and decide on your layout. There are many different layouts you can create with these blocks. So take your time and experiment with different options before making a final decision. The layout we have chosen for our sample is shown here. Once you have decided on your layout, it's time to start joining the blocks to create rows. Then join the rows together. Start by placing the first two blocks right sides together and pin and stitch the side seam on your sewing machine. It's important to stitch just inside the perimeter already stitched on the blocks so the stitching will not be seen on the right side later. Once the rows are completed, open the seams and press them firmly. Continue sewing your blocks together in the same fashion, following your chosen layout to form the row. Repeat this process until all the rows are completed. The next step is to join your rows by placing them together, right sides matching up each block in the row. Pin and stitch the row seam on your sewing machine. Again, it's important to stitch just inside the perimeter already stitched on the blocks so the stitching will not be seen on the right side later. Once you have completed the stitch out, open the seams and press it flat.
continue this process until all the rows are joined. Let's go ahead and add our loops to our hanger. To do this, you'll need to take out Fabric K for the loops. Begin by folding the two longer edges of Fabric K in about one centimeter, half an inch, and iron the folds to set them in place. Then, fold the fabric in half lengthways and iron it again to create a crease. Next, clip the fabric to secure the fold. To finish the loops, top stitch the edges together, making sure to use bobbin thread that is the same color as your top thread. Repeat the process on the other side of the fabric to make the loops look even. Fold the loops in half and stay stitch them secure. Once both loops are complete, make sure they are even in length and then trim them to your desired size. Finally, pin the loops to your flag, placing them one inch from the border stitching. This placement will depend on the type of hanger you want to make. Now stay stitch them in place. To create the back and binding of the runner, you will first need to place the backing binding fabric on the table with the wrong sides facing up. Then, place your sewn runner on top of the backing binding fabric with the wrong sides together. Pin them together and if desired, you can also use fabric spray to keep them in place.
Next, you will use a technique called stitching in the ditch to help all the layers of the runner together. This will help to keep the seams flat during the laundry process and will also help keep the runner flat over time. The stitching will be invisible on the front of the runner and will only be visible on the back. Make sure to match the bobbin thread on the underside of the runner with the fabric and use invisible thread on the top of the runner. Decide which seams need to be stitched as not all of them need to be. Then trim the excess backing so that it is one and a half inches bigger than the runner as this extra fabric will be used as the binding. To create the binding, start on any side of the hanger, fold the backing fabric in half, then fold in half again, making sure you fold it just over your seam stitching and pin. Continue pinning your binding until you reach your first corner. When you get to the corner, try and make a nice mitered corner. Turn your binding in at the corner and continue folding the same way as we did for the first side of the binding. You can iron your fold as you go if this helps with your mitered corners. Fold a final time and pin the corner in place. Continue pinning right around the hanger. Sew the binding to the runner just inside the folded edge of the binding. If desired, change the bobbin thread to match the backing. When you reach a corner, simply leave the needle down. Lift the foot and rotate the runner. Continue stitching in this fashion until you're all the way around the runner.
If you have used loops, flip them up so they are over the binding and use a square stitch to secure them in place. Your Wild Roses hanger is now complete. What a fantastic job everyone on completing the Wild Rose hanger project. We hope you had as much fun creating this stunning hanger as we did. The intricate rose applique and beautiful border blocks are sure to amaze your family and friends. Remember to share your completed hanger with us on our March Sew Along Facebook group. And don't forget to participate in our competition. Thank you for watching and following along with our tutorial. We hope to see you again for our next Sew Along project. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video with your friends. Keep creating beautiful things at sweepy.com. That is S-W-P-E-A dot com.